Notable change in toilet paper. Baltimore's Food Police makes news. Over 50% of moms say they want supermarkets help. And our consumer panel on fair trade. For today, Wednesday, November 3rd, 2010, this is Food News Today. Good morning. On last week's Food News Today, we talked about the influence of food trucks and also received tons of emails, both commending us and condemning us for putting the label Mo Foodies on those who are so passionate enough to follow food trucks around their cities. Well, hey, what would you call them? Share your ideas now in our live chat right below the video screen. Food News Today is sponsored by ConAgra Foods, who shares with me the desire to provide the most current, interesting, and unbiased food news. First up, it's all about fair trade. Fair trade products are popping up on the supermarket shelves, everything from coffee to chocolate, tea, sugar, and even produce items. So the question must be asked, do consumers actually understand what fair trade means? Well, the principles that define fair trade include fair price, where farmer groups receive a guaranteed minimum wage, fair labor conditions, and community development. Retailers take note. 60% of respondents felt that they knew exactly what fair trade means. A whopping 79% say that fair trade means that farm workers are paid fair living wages in return for implementing sustainable agriculture procedures. What matters most to consumers? Well, the number one response by 47% of the panel says fighting poverty. Over 80% of the consumer panel say that they would pay more for fair trade products. Fair Trade USA has done a terrific job on coffee and chocolate in particular. The challenge is whether the fair trade movement can successfully be communicated and executed throughout the supermarket aisles. Mr. Whipple must be rolling over in his grave. He convinced us that squeezably soft was best. Someone has to tell people there's a new Charmin. It's more than just squeezably soft. This past Monday, just two days ago, Kimberly Clark upped the ante and rolled out TV, print, billboard, and in-store advertising, introducing the world's first coreless toilet paper, Scott Naturals Tube Free. Now, the cardboard tube has been at the center of rolled toilet paper for over 100 years, helping increase production facilities and also maintaining product stability. But the world has changed, and now we're all looking for ways to become more sustainable and reduce waste, especially on packaging. U.S. households dispose of an estimated, get this, 17 billion tissue tubes every year, the equivalent of more than 160 million pounds of trash. Kimberly Clark's research reveals that only 37 percent of consumers, I'm shocked it's even that high, say that they frequently recycle cardboard tissue tubes. Now, this product will attract attention and drive sales and perhaps even shift the attention away from the news from last week that many toilet papers have reduced the size of the individual sheets in order to avoid raising retail prices. And by the way, if you didn't already know, the reason that Charmin was so squeezable, their cardboard tube was made from thinner cardboard. Now, foodies, here's a story just for you. The food police are active and they're here. Well, at least in Baltimore, the city that just issued its first trans fat citation since the ban was put in place a little over a year ago. Now, we've posted Baltimore's rule and procedure for your easy download. And the offender? Well, Healthy Choice, a restaurant with no connection to the ConAgra brand of foods with the same name. The ban prohibits food facilities from serving or selling non-prepackaged food items that contain a half a gram of trans fat or more per serving. To date, over 100 restaurants have received warnings about the trans fat levels. So why was this restaurant singled out? Well, Health Department agent Juan Gutierrez said that during inspections in July and then again this month, this restaurant was using a margarine with higher trans fat levels than what is allowed. In July, inspectors found a margarine that was above three grams per serving. They went back and now they discovered this month it was replaced with a margarine that was two grams, four times the allowed half a gram. Now, the owner of the restaurant says he'll pay the $100 fine, but the new margarine will cost him double what the original type costs. Makes me wonder just how much margarine he's using in the preparation of his healthier foods and exactly which of those foods that we saw in the video are healthy anyway. 
A new consumer study from Catalina Marketing and the Food Marketing Institute has identified key factors that are surrounding the role of the supermarket and its foray into health and wellness. The report found that 72% of grocery shoppers acknowledge that their local supermarket stocks a wide variety of healthful foods and beverages. That's the good news. But only half, this is the bad news, feel their store promotes healthy living. And less than one-third of respondents feel that supermarket employees were knowledgeable enough to provide assistance about nutrition, vitamins, nutritional supplements, and over-the-counter health remedies. Now, when it comes to moms, 51% of respondents with children find it hard to plan healthy meals. Now, this is a cry for help, and supermarkets must respond, as more than 40% of shoppers say they want their supermarket to provide recipes, information for specific health concerns, health screening services, nutritional counseling, and personalized wellness plans. What an opportunity. Now, according to the findings, shoppers want help most in learning how to replace fast food meals with healthier options. For Food News Today, I'm Phil Lempert. Thanks for joining us.